Welcome everyone to the Lee Schools TV podcast. I'm Adam Wright. Thank you for joining us. Our guest today is Lauren Kouchwa. I want to get your title right. You're the coordinator for special projects and student wellness for food and nutrition services. That's it. Yes. Thank you for joining us, Thank being you for our second me. guest. Oh, happy to be here. How long have you been in your current position with the school district? In my current position, I'm going on four years, but I've been with the district just to, actually I just had my seven year anniversary. Well, congratulations. Last week. Thank you. What were you before? I was the procurement supervisor and dietitian with the district. All right. So today we are going to be talking about one of my favorite subjects, food, because you know all about food. You're in health, food and nutrition services. Now, new this year, this is the big story this year that a lot of people are excited about and talking about. New this year, breakfast and lunch and lunch provided at no cost to all students in the district. Yeah. It's a big deal. How is this possible? How were we able to, to do this? So we're implementing something called the Community Eligibility Provisions Program. We implemented this two years ago, and we had all of our schools but seven. And then last year, we incorporated one more, which was Ida Baker, and this year we're hitting everybody. So all of the schools will be under the Community Eligibility Provisions Program, also known as CEP. This is a federally funded program that allows us to provide meals, so that's breakfast and lunch, to all students in the Lee County public system at no charge to them. Federally funded, we don't use any of the Lee County taxes for this. We also don't tap into any of the general funds that the district uses. So we're the only department in the district that operates under our own revenue and funds and then the federally reimbursement we get to provide the meals to the students. Is this something unique to Lee County? How many other school districts are offering this? Do you know? Uh, it's nationwide. It's available. It's up to the district to choose if they're going to participate or not. So we are in an unfortunate situation that we have a high enough free and reduced population that allows us to group some schools together. So. Just because one school has a high free and reduced population doesn't necessarily mean that its neighbor does as well. But if we group them together, we get an average that allows us to provide both schools meals at no charge to the students. Can you talk about the benefits of this program? I mean, it's obvious um, it'll help out some families that won't have to you know, give their kid a couple bucks every morning for mm -hmm. lunch. I remember when I was in school, it was somewhere between $1.50 and $2 for lunch. Yeah. Um, you know, depending on how many kids a family has, it can really help out a lot, right? Yeah, I mean, so it not only helps out our families with paid students or reduced students, so those that were paying a portion of the cost before or the full price. It also helps those students that were under the free program already. They were eligible for free meals. What we're finding is that CEP, now everybody's on the same playing field. So the students that were getting the free meals, there's no stigma there anymore because all of their peers are getting the meals at no charge as well. So we saw an increase in participation in those students that were getting the meals at no charge, plus the participation went up for those that were paying for their meals originally. Now this is huge because there's a big hunger need. Unfortunately, in um, pockets of Lee County, there is something called food deserts. So there's not a high accessibility to food to them. So their closest grocery store is to really a convenience store. So we know that we have students where we are their only full meal throughout the week. Unfortunately, I saw this firsthand. Um, it was my first two weeks here with the district and I will never forget this, but I had a student, I was helping out at a school Monday morning with breakfast and uh, this little guy came through and he said, oh, I'm so hungry, this is great. And the manager kind of gave me a look. And then he said, I have not eaten since macaroni and cheese. This is gonna be good. <laughs> and I thought, and I was like, wait, we had macaroni and cheese for lunch on Friday. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, talk about break your heart situations mm -hmm. that, that we see. And the manager looked at me and I was like, he cannot mean that, right? He did not go all weekend. And she said, no, that's what he meant. He did, he went all weekend without a meal. So. CEP is great that we're reaching the students that weren't coming up to us because they were afraid of that stigma before and providing these meals for those children who so desperately need them. What kind of feedback are you getting from the community about this program? It's mainly positive. You know, it's um, it's a great thing to do. It's hard to argue feeding the children. So we've seen a lot of um, feedback from the public that comes from our parents, from the community members as well, that are thanking us, that are very glad we're doing this. But honestly, the biggest feedback and the most important feedback for us is the students. Our students, uh, it's the unsolicited feedback that we love, nothing that we asked for. When they come to us and tell us, I loved this meal or thank you for this meal, I mean, we get really great thank you cards and Christmas cards and Valentines to our managers 
from the students they're feeding, thanking them for all that they're doing. Mm -hmm. Now, there's also a supper program, right? Yes. Tell me about that. So our supper program, we implemented it, let's see, this was three years ago, four, four school years ago now. Um, with the very first school, we did a pilot run at Ray V. Podorf. And the manager there and at the principal at the time was uh, Dottie, and she could have not been any more for it. They were begging for it. So we were like, great, you're our pilot site. Let's give this a shot. So the supper program is something that allows those students who, again, would go home and not get a meal. This is another meal available to them. It's usually at the end of the school day, right after the school, the last bell rings, that they can get another meal for them, as long as they're participating in some kind of enrichment activity, educational activity at the school. So four years ago, we started with Ravy Podorf, and now we have 43 schools offering the supper program. So it's definitely has shown popularity. It's shown worth in that those students before, some uh, the athletes also participate. They were going right from class. They Lunch for some of our high schoolers is, you know, 1030 in the morning. Mm -hmm. And then they go to practice later that afternoon. Well, they weren't getting that meal in between. So now we're seeing an increase in athletic uh, participation and performance, as well as those students in the education enrichments at the end of the school day. They're doing better as well. You know, those full stomachs really help give a little more energy and focus, right? Absolutely, yes. Now, now the supper program is that... Um, does that come at no cost to the people that participate? It is. That is a, it's a different, different federally funded program. It's not under the, we operate under USDA national school breakfast and school lunch programs. The supper program operates off, to, or off of something called CACFP. I'm just going to keep it that simple. And uh, they have their own regulations for what the meal must incorporate. It has to have whole grains, a protein, fruit, vegetable, and then a liquid milk choice for the students as well. But uh, so, yeah, that's kind of what the supper program ent entails. A couple other things I wanted to mention about the breakfast and lunch uh, program. You don't have to apply to no. have it at no cost. And but you did mention earlier uh, when we were talking before that if a family chooses that they would like to pay mm -hmm. for uh, is it just lunch or is it breakfast and lunch? It's up to the parents. Yeah. So they, they can if they want to pay. Absolutely. If a parent or a guardian of a child would not like to participate in the meals at no charge, they can let us know and then their student will, will mark it in the system for them to pay for their meals if they would like to. But again, if they would like to take advantage of the meals at no cost, no application necessary, kid just shows up to school and they'll get their, their yeah. meal? Yeah, no application necessary. Um, we used to have the application process with CEP. It saves a lot of time and money for the district as well. Some of our schools were having to have people help out fill these applications. There was a whole process. We had to do verification. Sometimes the parents or the guardians were actually having their reduced meal prices held up because the process is so long. The verification process can take some time. So we don't have to wait on that anymore. They can start off the school year day one, August 10th. All meals will be at no charge to them. And then also it helps the schools because they're not putting resources such as employees to that process anymore either. Okay, so what does a typical school meal look like? We can, let's just take lunch for example. Mm -hmm. what, kind of, what kind of foods are being offered to these kids? Parents might be interested in knowing that if they don't know already. Sure, so the USDA has regulations per grade level. So elementary has its own set of rules, middle and high school, they have their own set of rules. So. Starting with that, everything has to be whole grain. So all of our meals incorporate a whole grain somewhere at at least a two ounce serving. Then we have a protein offering of some sort, not necessarily a meat, it could be a vegetarian option. And then we have fruits, vegetables, and then a liquid milk choice as well. So if anybody has a dairy allergy, we have two registered dietitians on staff that will work with the student, the parent, and then the nurse, and sometimes the local doctor that the student is working with to provide a milk substitution for them as well. So that's kind of the basis right there. It's you know what you would think of with a full meal, but our regulations have um, there's not a lot of rules for how many fruits and vegetables we have to offer. However, in Lee County, I feel we go way above and beyond the minimums. So we have to offer at least a half a cup of fruit, a half a cup of vegetable. We go above that. We offer at least two fresh fruits 
that the students can choose from because fruits and vegetables aren't always the kids' favorites. So we want to offer a variety. So it's going to be something that they'll choose. We have a number of vegetables out every day. A number of our elementary schools now have veggie bars. So it's like a salad bar, but not the entree salad type. It's a veggie bar that allows the student to choose what vegetables they would like to take that day. So that usually incorporates tomatoes, carrots, cucumbers, green peppers, broccoli, something along that, those lines. The students can then choose, oh, I don't really like broccoli, but I'll take the carrots. Mm -hmm. It gives them something that they're going to eat. So we also try to do as much local as we can. And uh, we've got a great partnership with our produce distributor to make sure that happens. We'll get to that in a, just a minute. I, okay. I wanted to just bring up, now that sounds a lot different all these food options available to students today, mm -hmm. healthy food options available to students today. I grew up going through the Lee County school system. Mm -hmm. It sounds a lot different uh, than what I got years ago going through the system. Because Can you kind is. of put that into perspective? Um, <laughs> sure. Are there new, I know, I know that the federal government, I think in 2010, they passed the Healthy Hunger Free Kids Act, right? Yes. Does that have something to do with it? Absolutely. So as you said, the Healthy Hunger Free Kids Act came into effect 2010, and that changed all the rules and regulations that we had. So prior to 2010, though, the director back, I want to say this was 18 years ago, we took the initiative to take all fryers out of our kitchens. So when Healthy Hunger Free Kids Act, which we can just call it HHFKA, okay. came into effect, <laughs> that um, we were ahead of the curve. We were already offering whole grains. We were already at the reduced fat meals. So back when you and I were in school and we were getting you know, fried foods and french fries out of the fryer and things like that, that's no longer what it is today. Um, on top of all the fresh produce that we're doing, everything we do is baked fresh that day. So there isn't anything just sitting in a fryer or in a microwave. We don't have any microwaves in our kitchen as well. Everything is cooked fresh for the students that day. That's awesome. So kind of going back, uh, my next question, fresh from Florida menu items. Yeah. I think you were about to start talking about that. I was. Tell me about fresh from Florida. So fresh from Florida is the local initiative that we're very fortunate living in Florida, right? Aside from the beautiful weather, that beautiful weather helps our produce grow year round. So what we do is we try to incorporate any farm within a 50 mile radius of us to get our produce from them. Our produce distributor is down in Naples, it's Oaks Farms. So we get a lot of their stuff because they're vertically integrated, meaning that they grow grow what they sell. So we get their produce, but then they also work with farmers in the area to get produce from the farmers to our schools. So that's the Fresh from Florida initiative, but we're very fortunate that we have some schools doing beautiful school gardens. Those school gardens are allowed to take the produce that they grow, harvest them, and give them to our kitchen staff to prep because our kitchen staffs are, you know, they're the ones trained in safety and sanitation. So we I was do the say, prep. Is this regulated in some way? Yes. Yeah, okay. um, Primarily, GAP has to be followed, which is good agricultural practices. Okay. So once we in, we go and we view the school's um, garden, make sure that they're following GAP, everything's good to go, sign off, goes to the cafeteria for prep, and then it's out on the lines. And it is such a difference in the consumption of fruits and vegetables at those schools. When the student is a part of what they grow, they're more likely to eat it. And we see that hands down at the schools with school gardens. So... Not only is it offering healthy options, homegrown options, it's also benefiting the local economy, right? Helping these local farmers. Oh, yes, absolutely. You know, we love to keep the money in Lee County, and we're doing our best to make that happen. And if it can't be within Lee County, we're keeping the money in Florida. Cool. Now, I want to talk uh, about how healthy diets benefit students. And I've got, uh, doing a little bit of research prior to this, I've got a, I've got a study that I found. This is um, according to the Brookings Institution. It was a study done in 2017. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it was focusing on measuring the effects of offering healthier public school lunches on the end of year academic test scores for public school students in California. So this was a study done in California between 2008 and 2013. Now, I know they they were part of the study involved some outside the public school district uh, third party vendors that they were using for healthy school options. So that's a little different than what we do here, right? It is. Yeah. Do a we little. have do we do? Um, I mean, we get some from local farms, I guess that could can count as a third party vendor. That's kind of, yeah. Uh, but anyway, just the result of their study uh, found and they were scoring the nutritional quality of the menus using the healthy eating and index, the HEI. Um, and they found that in years when a 
school was using healthier options for lunch. Uh, students at the school scored better on end of year academic tests on an average of about four percentile points. Not huge, but notable. Oh, definitely. So can you talk a little bit about, you know, just the benefits that healthy eating has on student performance? I know I mean, neither of us are scientists, but um, I'm sure you have a little bit of experience. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I whenever I get this question, I always think, let's think of ourselves, right? When you eat, let's t take just a generic fast food meal, and then you were to eat something homemade. You tend to feel better after that homemade meal. You tend to feel better if that meal is fresh and incorporates fruits and vegetables. So whenever I get that question, I always think about, let's just think about how we feel and then put it into a little person, into a, a child. You know, that they're running off of energy all day long. Those teachers know those kids are active. So the better the nutrients are that they're putting in their body, the better their bodies are going to perform. I mean, we really could dig down deep if you want to talk about antioxidants and the way it helps your blood flow and all of that, and that helps the brain. But uh, the fresher, the better. Yeah, so I've got a little more information here too. Okay. Another another article I found on extension.org um, just kind of goes over how improved nutrition can increase brain function. Mm -hmm. For example, iron, if somebody's deficient in iron, that can decrease their dopamine transition, thus negatively impacting cognition. Yes. Um, deficiencies in other vitamins like vitamin E, vitamin B, iodine, and zinc are shown to inhibit cognitive abilities and mental concentration. Uh, additionally, amino acid and carbohydrate supplementation can improve perception, mm -hmm. intuition, and reasoning. Mm -hmm. See, who needs to be a scientist when you have the internet? <laughs> Uh, just quick disclaimer, don't believe everything you read on the internet, but uh, <laughs> I think these are credible sources that I was able to find. Uh, so obviously there are health benefits to a healthy diet. Yes. That's somewhat common sense. Right. Um, what I wanted to bring up was our kids, you know, just because these meals we're offering are healthier, mm -hmm. are you finding that kids are actually eating them? Like you, you have, you mentioned the different options available to them. Mm -hmm. so they can choose between different fruits and different vegetables if they don't like broccoli. Like you said, right. they could choose carrots. Are you finding that kids are actually eating what is being offered to them? Because, you know, we know little kids, they always want, you know, chicken fingers and pizza and stuff like that. Which we offer. <laughs> so, yes. Um, you know, one of the things we didn't talk about with the menu is the actual entrees we're offering. Yeah. Um, so we always offer the the main entree of the day is always a hot dish of some so of sort. And my biggest phrase, and I get teased about my motto, but my motto is nutrition on a plate means nothing if it's not consumed. So we can make the healthiest dish out there, but if a student's not going to touch it, what's the point, right? Exactly. We want them to take it in. Mm -hmm. So we do extensive, um, our own research. We do plate waste studies. We survey our students every year to find out what their favorites, their least favorites are. Our managers survey their students. We watch for trends that are going on out there. And then we also never put a single item on the menu that hasn't been student tested. So we perform taste tests with the students. It feels constantly throughout the year. We're doing a number of them every week to make sure that we're you know staying up to date with the trends of what the students want that sounds interesting how do you, do you go out and visit schools and yeah. pull some kids and say here well we do try a number of ways okay. um we have some schools that we're very we're, we're starting to really incorporate more of the culinary arts classes and we're anybody out there listening that would love to do some collaboration with us we will take you up on it because the culinary arts students they just seem to be a little bit more in tune with their palates of what they're trying but we want to know that what we're serving the kindergartners they're going to eat what we're serving the seniors they're going to eat so we don't put like one food on the menu and say okay district-wide k through 12 that's what you're getting we try to tailor our menus to the age level that we're serving and we do this with focus groups in the culinary arts programs and um, we're very fortunate of some schools that know the students the student government is another uh, good group for us to pull from and do focus groups with that but sometimes we just go out to the school and we set up like a kiosk and we do, we put out free the kids come. So we put free samples, come try our food, and then we hand them surveys to answer. So it's, you know, did you like it, love it, hate it, tell us why, that kind of a thing to get feedback so that we know when we put something out there, it's something that the students are going to want to eat. Cool. Uh, again, Lauren Couchois, coordinator with uh, Food and Nutrition Services here at the School District of Lee County joining us. Uh, there's a new app available this year that I wanted to talk about, uh, the Meal Viewer app. Yes. Tell me about this. How can, uh, what does it do? How can families uh, 
sign up for this. So this is our new interactive menu website and app available to any smartphone. So you can download it on your Android smartphone, iPhone, doesn't matter. As long as it's a smartphone, you can download the app or you can visit the district site. If you go to our department site, it'll take you directly to the meal viewer. There's a link to the meal viewer website. So what this app does, it, like I said, it's interactive. So you will sign up and then as a parent or a student, you can select your school and that will always go to, you put it in your favorites, it'll always ring up or I'm sorry, tune up to your school. As a parent, if you have students in multiple schools, you can select multiple schools as your favorites and then go back and forth between the two schools. So if you have a student in elementary on one menu and a student at middle on a different menu, you'll be able to go back and forth with the click or swipe of a finger and get a new menu pulled up for you. But the main feature is so that students are aware of what they're eating, but one of the biggest benefits of this program is that it's great for any student with a special diet need or our diabetic population. It shows you the carb counts per item for the whole meal. You can break it down. It shows you the allergens. So let's say you have a student with a gluten sensitivity or a wheat sensitivity that you can click on our allergen list, click wheat, and it'll cross out every item that has wheat in it. So you, wheat in it so you can see what your student should not be eating. And then the alternate are alternatives available for them to choose from that don't contain whatever allergen they may be sensitive to. Cool. It's a free app. Free app. Just download it. Please use it. We love it. It's a great it's a great new service we're able to provide so that the students and the parents can feel safe and good about what their what their kids gonna eat that day. Awesome. And again, it's called the Meal Viewer app. Meal Viewer, okay. yes. Um so I think we touched on it a little bit earlier, but one thing you mentioned when we were talking earlier is maybe some laws or guidelines that a lot of people aren't aware of that school districts have to abide by when it comes right. to food and nutrition. Mm -hmm. Anything you want to talk about as far as that goes? Well, as I mentioned before, you know, we don't have fryers or microwaves mm -hmm. and we get a lot of um, comments from the public saying like, I wish you wouldn't serve my kid pizza. I wish you wouldn't serve them chicken tenders, you know, the fried food. Mm -hmm. None of it's fried. So as I mentioned before, all those rules and regulations that we have to follow, our pizza, when you break it down, it is delicious. I promise I eat it at least once a week when I got to the schools and visit. But when you break it down, it's a whole wheat crust. It's a low sodium sauce. It's a low sodium, low fat mozzarella on there. It's a turkey pepperoni. I mean, it is as healthy as you can get and still be kid friendly. Because like I said, if they're not going to eat it, what's the point? The kids have to want to eat what we're putting out there for them. So those rules and regulations are a big challenge that we're, we have to meet. There's a lot of guidance for total fat, sodium. I mean, all of these saturated fat you know, all, everything we have to follow and breaks down to the vitamin category as well. But we take care of all of that on the backside so that the parents don't have to worry about it and they can feel good about what their kid is eating. So even if it is pizza, which is a kid's favorite, it's a healthy pizza for them. Hey, it's one of my favorites too. Yeah, I mean, I mean come on. <laughs> uh, I try to eat as healthy as possible, but I mean, I still have pizza. As you should. Almost weekly. <laughs> uh, okay. So one thing I've noticed uh, just around the school district building, this big box truck. Yeah. Uh, and on the side, the Healthy Living Lab. What is the Healthy Living Lab? The Healthy Living Lab is our mobile nutrition unit that goes around to the majority of our elementary schools. This is a great way. It helps meet curriculum standards and requirements, and she is providing health education, nutrition education to the students that is age appropriate per grade level, all about eating healthy and living a healthy lifestyle. So we're very fortunate to have some great presenters working the Healthy Nutrition Lab or the Healthy Living Lab and getting around to our elementary schools that may not otherwise get that education regularly throughout the school year. So she'll go to a school, spend a week with them. It's fun, it's interactive, it's more of a performance than anything else. And it's a great way to get the kids excited and educated about healthy living, healthy eating for a healthy lifestyle. Is that something a school schedules or she just makes her way around to every school during the school year? No, they have to sign up for it okay. and schedule. We are booked already for this school year, but I'm happy to say that we are going to be incorporating a second unit. We're in the process of building that so that we can reach more students in Lee County. Whenever we get to an elementary school, that kid goes home and tells their parent about it, and then the sibling wants to be a part of it. So we're trying to reach as many kids as we can with this second unit, or unit that will be up and coming. But one of the other great things about the Healthy Living Lab, like I said, it's a great way to get the kids excited. Mm -hmm. We have numerous stories of the kids going home and saying, you know, I tried a cucumber today. Can we get cucumbers at home? We've had parents write us and say, what did you do to that cucumber? Because my kid would never eat a cucumber before, and now that's all that they want. So it's great when we can see that the positive effects are then hitting the households as well. 
cool. And is there is there a healthy fit lab too? Is that a separate? There is. So yes, that, it's a separate unit, but it tags along with the healthy living lab. So the healthy living lab is all about healthy eating for a healthy lifestyle. The healthy fit lab is all about physical activity for your healthy lifestyle. So we make it fun for the kids as we know there's way too much just glued to the phone, glued to the TV. Mm-hmm. It is the kids' way. It's what they know. So we've taken that and put a twist to it to help them learn and have fun while being involved in technology. So it kind of looks like a food truck. The sides open up, and there's huge TV screens inside that are hooked up to Wii's. The Wii's play things like Just Dance or Zumba, yoga, something along those lines. Nintendo Wii, for Nintendo anybody who doesn't Nintendo Wii, know what she's yes. <laughs> and we put them in teams. So we might have a row of students up front that are the leaders of their team and they're the ones dancing and getting the points, but everybody behind them is helping that team get points as well. So we can go to a class of 50 kids out there. We're gonna have a big dance party, everybody participate, let's have fun, let's burn some calories, get active. And it is amazing to watch all 50 first graders just zone. They zone in, they play along, they have a lot of fun while being active. So the Fit Lab is a great component that goes along with the Living Lab. And they're learning as well. Yes. Okay, so I have a list of frequently asked questions for you. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. I think you've already answered some of these, but I'm going to ask them anyway. Um, Okay, FAQ number one. What kind of fruits and vegetables are offered at schools? (laughs) Well, like I said before, we always provide a variety. Um, One of the things I mentioned with the rules and regulations is that it breaks down to our subcategories of vitamins and it breaks down the subcategories of vegetables. So we never offer the same thing twice. We have too many vitamin categories to hit. So we have um, tomatoes and carrots out there to hit our vitamin A category. We have broccoli, kale, romaine lettuce to hit our dark leafy greens that we need to do. We also have to offer legumes every week. So we try to vary it up with different legumes and beans that are out there. Um, And that's kind of, you know, the gist of of the way that the vegetables go. No day is the same and we offer variety and we always offer fresh at least four times a week. The only reason we can't guarantee five days a week is because deliveries are made on Mondays and if the truck doesn't get there first thing, we're not gonna have fresh fruit, or I'm sorry, fresh vegetables anyways on Monday. So at least four days a week, we have fresh vegetables. And when it comes to our fruits, we do a lot of local. So there's always oranges and strawberries that we like to put out there. Watermelon is a huge one. Um, We also try to incorporate fun things that they might not otherwise get, such as papaya, mango, pineapple. Uh, A lot of berries are out there right now too. We're finding that if it's cut, ready to go for the kids, they're more likely to eat it. So that's uh, a lot of the fruits and veggies that we're doing. Great. Uh, Question number two, how often are salads offered to students? So it kind of incorporates to that four days a week minimum. We do have schools that are doing five days a week with that, but we always have salads available to the students at least four days a week for a vegetable choice and uh, up to four days a week for an entree choice. So if they don't necessarily want the main entree that day, they prefer something a little lighter and maybe not the hot meal, we always have salads available too. How many of the menu items are fried? And you did already answer this, but... None. (laughs) No fryers in the schools for at least 18 years now, so none of our food is fried. Great. How many of the menu items are prepackaged and microwaved? You already answered that as well. None. We don't have any... (laughs) I love your questions. We don't have any microwaves in our schools. We do have some prepackaged items, though, so I think that could throw a parent off or a guardian off if they're not sure what's going on there. But we have a lot of schools now participating in something called Breakfast in the Classroom, B-I-C. We're big into acronyms if you didn't catch that. But Breakfast in the Classroom. And that allows our students that may not get to school early enough or their bus is late or something along those lines, All of the students at those locations offering breakfast in the classroom eat in the classroom together as a whole. So because of that, we try to make sure that there's not a lot of waste and not not a lot of mess. So we do have some prepackaged items that go to those classrooms just so that we can keep it safe and sanitary, making sure that there's no cross-contamination and healthy for our students. Okay, next question. What kind of vegetarian options are available to students? Talk about hot topic. Vegetarianism and veganism is definitely taking over. And we have a lot of requests for vegetarian meals. So no matter what our main entree is, we always have a backup option that is vegetarian. And if with anybody's request, we can make it vegan. So we have to offer a protein component. And usually that could be a 
a meat-based product such as cheese or an egg or something like that, but our vegans don't eat that. So if they just let us know, we can put some legumes on there, help meet their protein requirement, and then we'll have a vegan meal for them too. But we have a lot of vegetarian meals. We also implemented something called Lean and Green Day. So every Wednesday this year, the main entree is a vegetarian option. Our backup option is also vegetarian. But it's a lean and green day. It's a way to promote that you don't necessarily have to eat a meat product to get your protein. There's plenty of other ways to get protein in your diet. Are you finding those that popular with students? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, here's an easy one. Cheese pizza. You know, I mean, yeah. it, when we think of vegetarian meals, I think sometimes people get very scared that it's, you know, it's something way off base that a student would never eat. But cheese pizza, that's a vegetarian item. We have our vegan options again, which could be the veggie salad. We do hummus to go um, trays and things like that. We have some great managers out there doing wonderful things with chickpeas and making specialty wraps for their vegan students. So we're seeing a huge increase in demand for those types of meals. I'm getting hungry just talking about all this. Okay. Uh, for kids with allergies, what options are available? Well, as I said earlier, we have two registered dietitians on staff that are willing to work with anybody to help meet their special diet needs. We do require a doctor's note so that we're sure to provide the correct medical diet for that student. So as long as we get a doctor's note from the parent or the guardian of a student, we can work with them. Um, we're very fortunate. We go above and beyond in our specialty meals for these students because we don't want to leave anybody out. You know, just because they might have a special diet, some people think that's way too much to take on. We don't. We always are willing to do that to make sure a student is eating. Because as you know, I mean, I, I'm kind of over the phrase hangry, but it's a thing. So if we're hangry, a little student's going to be hangry too. And they don't learn as well when they're hungry. So we like to reach as many students as we can and provide meals to them to ensure that they're doing well and excelling in the classroom. So we have a bunch of requests for dairy-free. Um, we are a peanut-free kitchens. We don't have any peanut products in any of our kitchens. We don't do, um, or I'm sorry, we offer a variety of dairy alternatives. So almond milk, soy milk, rice milk, coconut milk, and we've even done goat's milk before. So we're willing to work with whatever that student needs to help ensure that they're getting the nutrition throughout the day. I'd say probably 90% of the time I'm in a bad mood. It's just because I'm <laughs> right? hungry. Yeah. Uh, okay. A couple questions for you. What's your favorite fruit? Oh, goodness gracious. My favorite fruit. You know, it's hard to beat a banana. They're portable, easy to go, great healthy snack. Okay. I like strawberries. Okay. <laughs> uh, what's your favorite vegetable? Oh, I do love cucumbers. I, you know, yeah. I mean, you're hitting me with some uh, tough questions because yeah. it's hard to pick one. Mm -hmm. I eat a lot of fruits and vegetables. Grapefruit's yeah. another favorite fruit. I eat a lot of salads, tomatoes. Yeah. I mean, I don't think it's better to, what don't I like? I think it's okay. really. <laughs> okay. What, what don't you like? Yeah, nothing. I like it all. <laughs> uh, do you have a, a guilty pleasure food? Oh, I mean, outside of school pizza, regular <laughs> pizza. Yeah. I love, yeah, it's a, uh, like you said, once a week, that's about right. I yeah. Always comes back to pizza. It does. <laughs> I mean, it's such a good. It, it, it incorporates yeah. all the food groups. Uh, is there anything else exciting that your department is working on that we didn't get to in this conversation that you want to talk about? Well, we're always looking to do bigger, better, to be progressive, to go on to the next thing that the students want. So we're doing more outreach with our students this year. We're doing a lot more interaction with the community. We've hired a great marketing supervisor who's out there reaching our community and our parents. So we're always open to ideas that anybody wants to see us bring in. So we're hitting more health education with our living lab and our fit lab and expanding those programs as well we're doing more to market to our students so that the food looks appealing because there's still that stigma of school food and as we said to start off right it's not what we used to eat yep. so we're doing more to package our food in a more presentable manner so that it's what the students are seeing out in the restaurants such as starbucks or i mean a fine dining establishment as well it's we eat with our eyes first so we're working very hard that our presentation matches the flavor because the food tastes good and if anybody would like to come out and have lunch, breakfast with us, we're always inviting the public out. Student, parent, grandparent, um, you know, community member, if you're a government official, if you're a school district employee, come out and have lunch with us and see all the wonderful things that we're doing because there's a lot out there. At a school, they, yes. they uh, need uh, prior war uh, warning that they're, they want to come or can they just show up at a school and say, hey, I'd like to eat a one of your meals. Well, if anybody would like to contact me and I'll take you out, 
please feel free to do so. At the schools, it's always a good idea to give the school administration a heads up so that we are aware that they're going to come have lunch with their student that day. Is it okay if we throw your email address up on Absolutely. the screen? Absolutely, okay. yes, yes. All right. Uh, anything else you want to talk about? That's all the questions I have. No, I mean, you know, I really appreciate you guys being here. It's great to get the word out of all the good things that we're doing. Um, again, breaking down that barrier and that stigma of what school food is. I mean, I don't even like the phrase school food anymore because people just assume it's what we used to eat. And it's just, yeah. it's not. We're doing a lot with, um, you know, one thing I would talk about is the farm to school movement. We touched on it before, mm -hmm. but it is amazing that every day, there is something local on that student's tray, no matter the time of the year. We're fortunate with that seasonal, you know, we don't really have seasons of grow, it's year round seasonality for us, but we do a lot to work with our dairy suppliers, our bread. I mean, there's never a single time throughout the school year that there isn't something local available to the students. And that's that's pretty impressive if, that's at if every I can school? say so. At every school, district wide, there's always something local available. Okay. Cool. Do you have any idea, this just popped into my head, do you have any idea how many students uh, buy or get s school lunch as opposed to bringing school from home, or bringing lunch from home? <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I can't, I wouldn't have the per percentage numbers sure. for you right now, yeah. but I know that last year we did over 14 and a half million meals. So we had, I think last year, 88,000 students in the district, and we were serving roughly about 76,000 meals a day. So whatever that breaks down to, uh, that's a huge participation. We're, we're pretty proud of that. Breakfast is another one. We're working on our participation there because teenagers, I don't know what it is, but they're just not very hungry in the morning, or maybe breakfast isn't cool. But let me tell you, it's good. So we're always trying to increase our breakfast participation, and that's where breakfast in the classroom comes in to help us reach those students that weren't getting breakfast before. So we're increasing that participation as well. But yeah, 14 and a half million meals is, we're pretty proud of that. I don't know what restaurant chain can, can say yeah. that they're doing that annually. Breakfast. Actually, in 10 months period, really. Yeah, <laughs> most important meal of the day, right, breakfast? Is that right? still true, right? Oh yeah, we love that <laughs> phrase, most important meal of the day, breakfast, yeah. yes. All right. Well, Lauren, thank you so much thank for joining you. us. It was a great conversation. And you at home, thank you for listening and watching to the Lee Schools TV podcast. We'll see you later. Mm -hmm.